Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise this afternoon. Lord, we give you praise this afternoon. Lord, we give you praise this afternoon. We just want to thank you, Almighty God, for your mercies and grace and goodness and kindness. Thank you for ways in which you have helped us, ways in which you are helping us. Thank you, Almighty God, for this communion service as we come together as a family from different parts of the world, different parts of the country where we, where we may be right now. We just want to thank you, Almighty God, for bringing us together again in this month of May. Lord, when we look over the years, Lord, we can see your faithfulness. We can perceive your faithfulness. We have been recipients of your faithfulness. Thank you for being such a good God, a wonderful King, a beautiful Father. Thank you, Almighty God, for the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Thank you that this month of May will be a memorable one positively for all of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you, Almighty God, for long-standing problems. Get resolution in the name of Jesus. Thank you for a breaking forth and a breaking through through by the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost. As we step into this service, Father, we thank you that your name will be glorified, that your people will be edified. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right, welcome to uh, the month of May. I want to thank you very much for coming to church. Uh, Today's um, midweek, uh, sorry, today's communion service, I'm going to be running through what God laid in my heart to share with you as his customary and then I will also, we've got some prayer points that we are going to be running here. So the month of May here is a month that God says it is time to grow. It is time to grow. Remember last week, uh, so last month, it was Arise and Shine. And we have received a number of testimonies. I mean, last last Wednesday, for example, in church, it was wonderful with testimonies that God, the people just shared over, over and over things that God is doing in their lives. And just Arise and Shine. And... God is continuing that that trend this month by telling us it is time to grow. Now, this word is for every one of us. Regardless of where you are right now, whatever level of achievement you think you, you have achieved, God wants you to grow more. God desires for you to grow more. And that is not difficult to understand because we know that in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse, uh, when God um, you know made... Uh, created, you know, created Adam and Eve, God gave them a mandate. God says to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and dominate it. So the ultimate mandate of God is for you and I to be dominators. To dominate what? The earth. God is not asking you to dominate a human being, another human being, to terrorize people. No, he's asking you to dominate the earth. What does it mean to dominate the earth? It means to bring its resources under your use. And I want us to really understand that. God wants you to take the resources of the earth that he has placed on this earth and bring it under your use to subdue it. To subdue, to subdue means that thing is trying to bring its heads up, right? You subdue it and then you dominate so, God has given me a word for this month. It's from book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 20. And the Bible says, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So, that is customary. I will step through this text and then I will run, run some prayers. We'll take communion and then we'll pray again. All right. So, that's the way we normally will run it. So, so, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. That is the key passage for this month. So mightily grew the word and prevailed. So I I I let us some words in there that is important. Now remember the word mightily means that which is more than the normal. That which is more than the uh, the, 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 the 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 normal. Mightily grew the word. It means that it is expanding. That which is uh, is abundant abundant. That which is more than normal. The Bible then says, grew the word of God and prevailed. Now, the word grew in this text is from the Greek word that is pronounced hoxano, hoxano. And it means to grow, to become greater, to increase like a multitude of people. 
or the inward Christian growth. So which means God is expecting you and I to grow in our work with him. God is expecting you and I to grow in every area of our lives. So which means if there's been a goal you set for yourself beginning of the year, that you say, oh, I'm going to do this, go back to your goal and say, hey, in which way have I grown? In which way have I grown? In which way have I advanced forward? Now, if, well, another word here is the word of God. The word of God here is the logos, the logos of God. And it means a decree, a mandate or an order. A decree, mandate, or order, which means when you make a decree, you made a decree, you issue a decree, you make a, a, a mandate, you declare what you want. But the other, the other word for word, the word is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the logos of God, is the word of God, is the is the wisdom of God, is the p- power of God. All right. So essentially, in the in the text in the Greek language here says the word of God is logos, is, is Jesus Christ, the personal wisdom and power in union with God, is minister in creation, the creation to bring things to bear, and the government of the universe. That's beautiful. Which means Christ is the creator and the, uh, the, the manager of the universe. Everything in this world, created and managed by Jesus. The Bible then says, if you go back to the text, it says, so mightily grew the word of God. God wants his word to grow in your life. In the creativity that will come into your life, in the in the in the management of the universe that will come into your life, it says here that Jesus Christ is the cause of all the all all the world's life, both physical and ethical, which for the procurement of man's salvation put on human nature in the person of Jesus Christ the Messiah, the second person in the Godhead, and shown forth conspicuously from his words and deeds. So the key takeaway from here is so mightily grew. The person of Jesus in your life, the word of God in your life, right? The decrees that will come out of your mouth. But what happened? Is is it just to grow? Just and stay there? No. The Bible says, and prevailed, which is the real conversation. The word of God will grow and it will prevail. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you that in whichever area of your life that you need a, a prevailing power of God to manifest, that this month the word of God will prevail for you. What does it mean to prevail? To prevail in this text is from the word ishku in Greek, and it means to be strong, to be strong in body, to be robust, to be sound in health. You see, it's actually talking about the word of God brings healing to your body. Amen. To have power, to have power, to have the dunamis, the power of God, extraordinary deeds. This month, you will do extraordinary deeds in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible here says this word prevail, it also means to wield power, to have strength to overcome. When you look at this word, it's about ability. It's about ability. It's about, you know, ability that shows itself in extraordinary deeds. So, God wants you to grow this month. As you maintain his word out of your mouth, as you spend time to maintain his word, spend time in the word of God, spend time in putting yourself out there. Remember, God already decreed for you to prevail. Therefore, when you are doing your study, carry a consciousness of what? Of an overcomer. When you are going to work, carry a consciousness of an overcomer. When you are uh, attending to children, Carry a consciousness of what? Of an overcomer. God does not want you to have a consciousness of a victim. God doesn't want you to have a victim, a consciousness that says, oh, it's because of what happened to so and so, that's why this happened to me. No, God says, listen, the word of God is going to grow and prevail in your life. So, what does this mean to you? For you, rather, as you apply the word of God and make the word of God preeminent in your life. There will be a shift in your life because the word of God will work for you. The word of God will work for you. John chapter 1 verse 4 in the New Living Translation says, The word gave life to everything that was created. If there's something in your life today that requires a new boost of life, the Bible says the word gave life to everything that was created. And its life brought light to everyone. Its life brought light to everyone. The word of God will bring life to your life. Extraordinary life to your life. The word of God will bring light to your life. So, you see, the life and the light of God. Important. The life of God. 
and the light of God. Very important. The Bible says that this light shines in darkness and darkness can never extinguish it. So the word that God asked me to share with you today is a word that just is there to encourage you to say, it is time for us to grow as a family. It's time for us to grow. So if there are areas in your life, you know, we are now in the, the second qu- quarter of 2023. If there are areas in your life you thought, man, I ought to have grown in that area. God said, it is time now. For some of you, you have been you have been laboring behind the scenes, like I mentioned in church earlier. You've been laboring behind the scenes, and you haven't seen anything because it is not time to manifest. You know, if you plant a seed on in the, in, uh, in the in the earth, that seed is not seen, but that seed is growing under the earth, but you can't see it. All of a sudden, you go there one day, and the, what the seed is turned into a plant, and it begins to grow out of the ground. If that is a season now where you are, a season now where you are just about to grow out of the ground. You are spending years laboring and doing stuff and doing this and that. It's time now for you to get your effort to come out now perhaps you are here you haven't put in a, a number of effort that you think you ought to put the grace of god is being released to you today to be able to take advantage of you want to pray i want us to pray you know as we, as before we step into um uh, the, the 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 communion itself is that you know if you have you have been there where it seems like you are at the end of yourself. You are tired. You don't know what to do. You might not even have direction. You think, what am I going to do with my life? What, what is the next step? What, we're going to ask us to pray that God will begin to give us direction. You know, the Bible here says the word gives life or the word gave life to everything. The word gave life to everything. What does that mean? It means God is able to breathe in new life to something that looks like it is dead. Something that looks like there's no way out. It might be in your body. It might be in your business. It might be in your career. God is able to breathe new life into that space. So the first prayer I want us to pray first by as you stand as you stand by yourself there, you know, wherever you are in your room or wherever, just begin to say, Father. In this month of May, I receive new direction. I I receive life. I receive life from you in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive strength from the inside out. Some of you, as you begin to pray right now, you go will begin to show you new vision about your life. And some of the vision you might receive might be so humongous, I don't know where to go. Begin to say, Father Lord, I receive help from you. I receive help from you, Almighty God, to know what to do and to do what I have to do. I receive help from from you, Lord, to, to, to go on the pathway that you have shown me. Lord Almighty God, when I look at what you have shown, it seems so humongous, so big, Lord, but I thank you that your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is more than sufficient for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. That reminds me a story about Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was called by God to minister the gospel to the ends of the earth, and the work was so humongous, so big for him, and he was asking God. He got to a point where he, the Bible call about the fact that he had this what they call thorn in the flesh. Some people thought it was sickness, but it wasn't sickness. It was all of the all of the challenges he was facing in the dispersion of the of the, of the gospel, and he felt like, oh man, I'm just going to quit. And 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 God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. My prayer for you this this afternoon, my prayer for you this afternoon is that the grace of God, as this is the month of May, which is the fifth month of the year, and number five is a number of grace. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that the grace of God will be preponderant in your life this month like you've never witnessed before in the name of Jesus Christ. When grace operates in your life, it means that you are going to get farther than you can get by yourself. I pray for you this afternoon that the that God who causes the sun to rise and the sun to set without fail in each day will send you destiny helpers in the name of Jesus Christ. When you are still thinking about what to do, how to go about it, the Lord will bring resources for from you from the corners of the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. God will raise help for you, for you in ways that you have not experienced before. I pray for you this afternoon in the name of Jesus that the almighty God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ will send help to you from uncommon quarters where other people are saying it is not possible, where other people are saying it cannot be done. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that God will raise help for you. God will cause you to move forward in life. Oh, I pray for you that the word of God will be a light onto your path and a lamp onto your feet. I pray for you that you will not walk in darkness. I pray for you that the might of God will cause life to happen in your life. I pray for you, for those of you who are married, that God is
is, res- is resolving challenges for you. He's sorting you out. I pray for you, for those who need to go in a new pathway, that God will open doors for you and cause you to thrive in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God Almighty, in Jesus' name we pray. Now, this month, God then gave me a scripture in Psalm 55 that we are going to use to pray. So, over the next five minutes, I'm going to call the prayer points. I'll ask you to pray them. And then when we finish that, I will then take the communion uh, with everybody. Then we'll do the round of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. So we got like half, half an hour that to, to just run through the rest of it. So in Psalm 55, uh, Psalm, uh, sorry, Psalm 55. No, sorry, Isaiah chapter 55, not Psalm 55. Isaiah chapter 55, that's what it is. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 is a most uh, beautiful portion of scripture. And one of the things that is in this scripture is talking about the power of the word of God. Now, remember, God says here, so mightily grew the word and it prevailed. Remember, one thing that you have to do that God will expect you to do this month is spend more time in the word. Spend more time in the study of the word. Why? Because that word will grow in your life and it will prevail for you. Without doubt, the word of God will grow in your life and it will prevail for you. Where other things are failed, the word of God will work for you. Where your intellect has failed, the word of God will work for you. So it is important to what to to put preeminence on the study of the word. It might be one chapter a day, it might be one verse a day, it might be a couple of verses, it doesn't really matter. Make it a consistent habit to spend time in the word because the word of God gives life to everything. The word gives life to everything. If everything is, as a matter of fact, the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 says that by faith we believe that the word was created by the word of God. The universe was created by the word of God, which is everything you see was created by the word of God. Now in John chapter 1 verse 4 here, it says the word gives life to everything that was created. So not only did the word of God give, create the, the original creation, the word of God maintains the creation. So now, which means that if I can take this word now and put it into myself and ponder on them and speak about them and declare them over my life, then I would expect that word of God to create things in my life which, which, which never existed before. I also expect to maintain things in my life that may, need to, that, that may need maintainers. It might be my health, it might be my education, it might be anything. The word of God can maintain it for me. Amen? So now, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 5 says, Surely you will summon nations you know not. And nations you do not know will come running to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has endowed you with splendor. The word splendor is the word glory. The Bible here says the Lord God has endowed you with splendor. You might be there and say, ah, I don't think I have splendor. What do you mean by splendor? I don't think see myself as splendor. But that is your viewpoint in the natural. The way God sees you, what he has endowed you with is what? Is splendor. Splendor means the glory of God rests upon you. Splendor means that when people see you, they don't see you, they see the glory of God. Now, what I'm sharing with you this afternoon, you have to believe it to work for you. You got to believe. The Bible says that unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not benefit them because it was not mixed in with faith in them that heard it. Which is when the word comes to you, your responsibility is to believe it. To believe it and carry the consciousness of it and let that consciousness drive everything that you do. So God is saying to you, I have endowed you with my splendor. I have endowed you with my glory. It means that when you show up in the office or you show up in school, or you show up among your friends and colleagues or even your family member. They don't see you. They see the glory of God. They see the splendor of God. They see the dark side of God upon your life. So this prayer point this month, I want you to pray the prayer. The first point says, in this month, the wisdom of God is opening new opportunities for me across the nations. The wisdom of God is opening new opportunities for me across the nations. You So some of you might be, what, maybe you're in a kind of trade or you're kind of work that you do, God begins to open up doors for you. If you're a student, it means God begins to showcase you beyond even the, the environment in which you live, the environment in which you go to school. So begin to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your wisdom, the wisdom of God is opening opportunities for me across the nations. Let's make that our prayer. Let's make that our prayer. Lord, we give you praise and we thank you, Father. We decree and declare that the wisdom of God is opening opportunities for us across the nations, not just in where we live, not just in our local but father we thank you almighty god that your wisdom the ability to do things in your, your own way that 
that defies all the logic of men is now opening opportunities for us across the nations in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's begin to say my ideas are reaching nations far and wide. You might be a student. You might have an idea for a product to create. You might have an idea to do one thing or the other. That God, idea that God has placed in your heart. Don't discard and say it doesn't matter. Begin to say, Father, these ideas are going to reach nations far and wide in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We declare by faith that these ideas that you are placing in our hearts, Lord, they might be a seed. They might be a seed right now. Seeds in the heart. Just tiny seed. But we thank you, Almighty God, that from a small acorn, an oak tree will grow. I thank you, Almighty God, that these ideas are reaching nations far and wide in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. The last point here says, God Almighty has endowed me with splendor and I prosper in all that I do in the name of Jesus Christ. Make that your prayer point. Say, Father, I thank you that you have endowed me with your splendor. You have endowed me with your grace. You have endowed me with your glory and I prosper in all that I do in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty God, that this month of May, that I have been endowed with the splendor of God, with the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever my name shows up, wherever my idea shows up, Lord, the glory of God we showcase this in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty God, that I prosper in all that I do in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. We know that under the new covenant, God is never away from us. We don't have to go seek the Lord. Why? Because he lives on the inside of us. Amen. God lives on the inside of us. So this is an Old Testament, Old Covenant uh, 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 statement. In the New Covenant, God lives on the inside of us. So what do we say here? We say the Lord is always with me. Repeat after me if you can. You don't have to uh, uh, unmute your phone, phone, uh, uh, microphone, but you can repeat after me here because it's a long one. Say the Lord is always with me. The Lord is always with me. He will never ever leave me or forsake me. He will never ever leave me or forsake me. God is in my corner. God is in my corner and I will not be afraid. God is in my corner and I will not be afraid. This month, in the name of Jesus Christ, I will experience the presence and the mercy of God in new dimension. I repeat, I will experience the mercy of God, the presence of God in new dimensions in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 10 says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it to board and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Bible is trying to explain something to us that when the rain comes and the snow comes down from heaven, both of these things, they do not return the same way that they came. But what do they do? They water the earth. Why do they water the earth? So that the earth can board and the earth can flourish. The reason why they, 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 they water the earth is for the earth to flourish and board. Why does it help them to flourish and board? So that it can yield seed for the sower and bread for the eater. This is so beautiful. Essentially what he's saying here is that the word of God causes seed to be produced. The word of God causes bread to, 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 to be produced. Essentially, somebody needs a seed to do a business. They need, maybe they need funding for their business. They need funding for their, uh, for their investment or they need an um, in, in, in idea for their project. Whatever it is that somebody needs as a seed, the word of God is able to give you that seed. But somebody also says, oh, I need food. I, need, I don't know what I'm going to eat tomorrow. You know, the word of God is able to, again, make that bread available for you. So, that is the value. That's the power of the word of God. So here in this one, I say, I decree that in this month, the word of God will work for me in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus that the word of God will work for me in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that your word right now is working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. I will pronounce your word out of out of my mouth and your word will work for me. Your word will produce results in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word will not return void. Your word will not return void the way it came in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word will prosper in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, I live a flourishing life. I live a flourishing life. 
and my seed grows bountifully in every area of my life. Now, what does that mean? It means that in every area of your life where you need the where you need growth, you be, you are going to begin to express that growth. But remember. You need to ensure you are speaking the language of God. Make sure you are saying the same thing that God says. So let's say, let's say that again together. I live a flourishing life and my seed grows bountifully in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I live a flourishing life and my seed grows bountifully in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 11 says, so is my word. So is my word. That goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. But we accomplish what I desire. And achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you saying you can't hear me? Um, Is everybody hearing me? Titi, I think I'm just in your chat now. Are you able to hear or not? I think it was my internet connection. It's fine now. Okay. Okay. Praise God. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the Bible here says, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. Now, this is absolutely beautiful. God is saying to you, the same way you have the snow and the, and the rain come down on the earth and cause the earth to make to board and flourish and therefore the, the earth produce seed for the, for the ones that need seed to sow and the earth produce bread for the person that needs to eat. It's the same with the word that has gone out of the mouth of God. That word will not return empty. But that what we produce, what God desires, and that what we achieve the purpose for which God sent it. Now, listen to me carefully. You are a child of God. The Bible says this. It says in Ephesians chapter three, uh, chapter, no, chapter six says, "Imitate God, imitate God, as dearly beloved children." Which means God says, "Copy what I do and do the same thing." And now God here says, "Hear what He says. My word, my word that I have spoken will not return empty." That means when you speak the word, that word will carry out what the word was said. So now, this is, this is a double-edged sword, right? Because it means you've got to be careful what you say out of your mouth. Don't those, those start saying, oh, nothing is working for me. Things are so hard. Things are getting bad. Stop saying that. Because now, what the next prayer here is quite powerful. Because it means your word will produce result. Amen? So say with me, my word is leading with power. My word is leading with power. And my word will achieve positive results this month. In the name of Jesus Christ, my word is leading with power. My word is leading with power and will achieve positive results. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Almighty God. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life over my life. In the name of Jesus, I speak life over my life. In the name of Jesus, I speak life over everything that pertains to me. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. They have life and death. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, which means to express life and to express death. Start from what? The words you say. So say, I speak life over my life in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that I speak life over my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 12, the Bible says you will go out in joy and be left forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. This is what is so beautiful here. Now remember, your word will produce results in your life. Your word will go out and will not return to you void, right? It will produce that same result. So it said, this month I'm joyful. This month I'm peaceful. This month I'm joyful. This month I'm peaceful. Everything in nature favors me. Everything in nature favors me. Everyone is conspiring right now to favor me. Everything in nature and Everyone is conspiring together right now to favor me. In the name of Jesus Christ, this month I am joyful. This month I am peaceful. And everything in nature favors me. In the name of Jesus Christ, that is a prayer that I want you to pray there. Father, we thank you, Lord Almighty God. This is a month of joy. It's a month leading with joy and the peace of the Most High God. Lord, we thank you, Almighty God. Everything in nature works in our favor, even this month in Jesus' name. From the hair that we breathe and, 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 the, and the water that we drink and the clothes that we wear. And everything, home and trees and, 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 and birds, everything in nature, Lord, thank you that they are all working together to favor us. We thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. And the last prayer point here says, instead of the thorn bush, we grow the juniper. Instead of the briars, 
the mighty the mighty will grow this will be for the lord's renown for an everlasting sign that will endure forever so essentially this is saying there's a turn around there's a turn around instead of negative things happening in your life positive will not happen but what made that happen because you have chosen to speak what you want you have chosen to speak what the way god speaks you have spoken you are speaking the way god speaks so now say with me i am a wonder for the world to be old i am a wonder for the world to be old i am a wonder for the world to be old the grace of god carries me on its wings the grace of god carries me on its wings i enjoy 100 percent positive turnaround in my life in the name of jesus i enjoy i experience a hundred percent turnaround in the positive in my life in the name of jesus christ you know this morning as i began to pray this prayer what is coming to me is that there is going to be a tsunami of change a tsunami of change the grace of god will come to you it might come to you in a way that you don't understand you, you might not really understand but god is going to elevate you and lift you up but it's going to happen for you so you need to believe god you need to agree with him you need to work with him amos 3 3 is one of my favorite uh, verses in the bible the bible says can two work together i said they be a great so we need to work together and agree with god hallelujah and how do you agree with god you start by saying what god has said praise god forevermore hallelujah hallelujah praise god all right now it's time for the communion we got 15 minutes left so first corinthians chapter 13 chapter 11 first corinthians chapter 11 so i have my bread here first Corinthians chapter 11 the bible says for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me so father in the name of jesus father in the name of jesus father in the name of jesus we thank you almighty god for what the body of jesus represents as we partake of this meal together lord we are reminded we are reminded of what christ has done for us as we partake of this meal, oh Lord, we are reminded of the goodness of God, the kindness of God. The fact that Christ took upon himself our infirmities. He took upon himself the bitterness that we ought to receive. And by virtue of his death on Calvary's hill, we have been saved, we have been delivered, we have been, we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you with we give you praise. Lord, now we take this bread in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, we decree and declare that eternal life is at work in our organs. Every organ of our body right now receives and functions according to the eternal life of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can take the bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25. And the Bible says, and the same, after the same manner, also he took the cup. Took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new covenant. This cup is a new covenant or new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me hallelujah essentially saying to us this blood this wine represents the blood of jesus i know the beauty of the blood of jesus is that the blood of jesus christ the bible says we have been brought near ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 we have been brought near delightfully by the blood of jesus we have been brought near we are in god god is in us we are never we are never away from him so by virtue of this blood we know that the the mandates and the beauty 
and the blessing of the new covenant are ours. And it says here in verse 26, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are showing the Lord's death till he comes. You are sending a reminder that Christ died for you, that all is going to be all right in the name of Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ is what has given us guaranteed access. The blood of Jesus Christ is what was used to tokenize the covenant. And by virtue of the blood of Jesus, we remind ourselves this afternoon, that everything that Christ has bought for us, that he has won for us, that he has secured for us, are ours forever. How do we know that? Because when you tokenize the, 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 the covenant you, you had with Noah, you put a rainbow in the, in the, in the sky, you said you, you never destroy the earth by flood again. Lord, today we don't see the rainbow and think, and, and think oh, God is going to destroy the earth. It never crosses our mind because we trust that. The same way you want us to trust that, this blood speaks for us. For I, therefore, in the name of Jesus, we take this wine now, believing that this wine represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins, that was shed for us to be, to be in God, that was shed to ensure that we are part of the new covenant. We take this now by faith. We receive this with thanksgiving. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You can take the wine. Hallelujah. 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 Makoso tali arabos. Hallelujah. It is time to grow. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Almighty God, for the growth that is going to happen. Thank you for the growth that is going to happen. Thank you for the tsunami that is on the way. Lord, we thank you that we are being prepared even right now for the blessing that you have prepared. Oh, thank you, Almighty God. I pray for my brothers and I pray for my sisters. I pray for everyone, Almighty God, on this call this afternoon that, Lord, you will prepare us, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, prepare our hands. The psalmist says, you are the one who has, taught, who has taught my fingers to fight. Lord, thank you for being our mentor. Thank you for being our paracletos. Thank you for being our hiding place. Lord, this afternoon, in the name of Jesus, I decree over your children that the blessing of God rest upon them afresh. In the name of Jesus, I decree over them by the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost that the grace of God will lift them up. The grace of God will help them. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Almighty God, that it's not by power, nor by might, but by your spirit. I thank you, Almighty God, that now you are releasing gifts and talents and new dimensions onto your people right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Almighty God, that our hands are strong to fight. Our hands are strong to fight. I thank you, Almighty God, that even right now, oh, Lord, you are strengthening us from the inside out. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the energy. That has been released in our heart and in our mind from the inside out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for our children, those who are doing their exam. I thank you for success. I thank you for your help that is available to them. I thank you, Lord, for favor in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for tenacity. I thank you for the ability, Almighty God, to, to persevere and push through in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Almighty God, for those who are looking for job. That, Almighty God, new frontiers are now being opened unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, Almighty God, for expansion. I thank you for your grace and your might and your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for someone today who desires a deeper walk with you. Somebody's been crying. I don't know you i don't know how to walk this lord i pray that this person even tonight tonight when the person says we encounter the grace of god in the name of just Christ, and encounter so real the person will know almighty god that you are a real god you are a good god you are a wonderful father lord deepen our work with you that in this new dimension that we're entering into lord thank you that you are lifting us up you are lifting our hands up almighty god oh lord we thank you oh lord that you have lifted up our own like the own of the unicorn in the name of just Christ. we thank you almighty god God, that will not fall, fail, or falter in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Almighty God. Lord, we give you praise. This month of May will be a wonderful one. 
This month of May will be a glorious month. This month of May will be a month of advancement. This month of May will be a month, Almighty God, of the joy of the Lord. This month of May will be a month of the peace of God. This month of May will be a month of the shalom of God. This month of May will be a month, Almighty God, that we will declare nothing broken, nothing missing. In the name of Jesus Christ, this month of May will be a month, O God, that testimonies will fall upon testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ, this month of May will be a month, Almighty God, that long-standing problems will disappear. This month of May will be a month, Almighty Mary God, that destiny help us will rise up to help us. This month of May will be a month, Almighty God, that things will go in the trajectory that God has ordained for it to go in the name of Jesus Christ. This month of May will be a month, Almighty God, that the little we have, the little we have, we, we go farther in the name of Jesus Christ. This month of May will be a month, Almighty God, that we will experience the joy, the peace, the goodness of God. Lord, we thank you so much. Lord, we give you praise and we bless you for your faithfulness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for helping us. Thank you that it is time to grow. It is time to grow. I thank you, O Lord, that there are people here, O Lord, that you're going to bring new mentors into their lives. People that can mentor them along the way for the place where they need to go. In the name of Jesus Christ, help us to be teachable. Help us to be teachable this month, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your supernatural intervention in every one of our lives. Thank you, Almighty God. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. As I begin to round up, the story I just want to share quickly before we go. And the story goes this way. You know when, when Moses encountered God on the mountain? The Bible says Moses was shepherding his, the, the flock and the bush was burning, but the bush was not consumed. So the fire that was consuming the bush and the bush did not get consumed was a type of God. So there was a fire that consumes the plant, but the plant is not consumed. It's a type of God. We fast forward in the life of Elijah. Elijah went to Mount, Mount Carmel. And Elijah had to prove between uh, the, 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 the God of Baal and our God Almighty. And, it, and, and Elijah said, the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And, the, and the, prophet, the prophets of Baal put all of their offering on the, on, the, on the tabernacle and they were cutting themselves and praying to Baal to send fire. But Baal is not a God. Baal is just, a, just an apparatus of human contraption. What happens? Fire never came down. But Elijah went there, arranged the offering on the altar, pour water and pour everything and make the whole place soaked up. And Elijah said this. He said, the God that answers by fire, let him be the God. And immediately, the Bible said, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, licked up all the water, consumed everything. That's another dimension of God. The fire that consumes and burns everything up. Burns, it burns of impurity in your life. Burns of disagreement. Burns of things that is not allowing you to progress. The fire of God will burn those things off in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. If there's anything in your life today that has held you back, I prophesy in the name of Jesus that this month, those things will be born off. Those things will be taken off by the power of the Holy Ghost. That God, as the fire that consumes sacrifice, will come into your life in new dimension and take away every negative connotation that has held you back in the name of Jesus. So that's the second dimension. As a third dimension. You see a story in the book of Daniel where these three guys were thrown into fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got thrown into fire because they would not bow down to uh, King Nebo. And what happened was they got thrown into fire. The Bible says they caused this fire to be heated up, I think 10 times or 50 times, I can't remember the number of degrees. It was Multiple, multiple times more than a normal normal uh, degree. So maybe the normal degree of the furnace is, let's say, 100 degree. Maybe it turns out to 500 degree. Which means, by, that, by throwing them into that kind of fire in the natural, they are meant to get what? To just get burnt up and evaporate, as it were. But the Bible says when they got thrown into it, 
but even the hair on their body did not get singed. And then Nebuchadnezzar came there and said, did we not throw three men into the fire? How come there are four of them in the fire? And the fourth one is like the son of God. That's another fire. A manifestation of the fire. God's fire in the middle of the fire that will not allow the fire to touch you while you are in the middle of the fire. You are going through challenges here quite all right. But the presence of God will be so preponderant upon your life in the middle of that challenge. You will not even know you are going through it. I pray for someone this afternoon that if that is your reality where you are going through some challenges, that God will carry you through and get you to the other side without you even knowing. The hair on your body will not be zinged. You will not even have an experience of what has happened in your life. You will not even be able to come back and say, ah, so so and so thing happened in my life because the spiritual power of God will walk upon you. As you step into this May, I want you to carry this consciousness in your mind. God is for you and is with you. It is time for you to grow. The same God that consumed the, the, the plant with Moses and the plant did not get burnt, the same God that licked up the, the sacrifice of Elijah, the same God that showed up as the fourth man in the fire, he sees the same dimensions of God in different ramifications. I pray for you that in 2023 May, that you will experience God in a new dimension in every area of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As you live here, carry that consciousness. God is for you. God is with you. God is in you. And God is working all things out for your good in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful King, we thank you. We bless you. And we give you praise. Thank you for your gift today. Thank you that even as we partake of this meal, we are reminded of what you have done for us. We take our memory verse and we know that so mightily grew the word of God in our own lives and this word will prevail. Prevail over every situation. And therefore, we are excited as we go into this month, knowing fully we're almighty God that you got our backs. All things are working together for our good. Lord, we give you praise and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you again for joining. Let us share the grace as we finish. The grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, surely God's goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives and we dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. And ever. Amen. 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 Happy new month and enjoy. So remember, it is time to grow. It's time to grow. You are blessed. Have a good one. You're blessed. <laughs>